All right. Hi everyone. I'm Grandmaster Magesh Panchanathan from Kings and Queens Chess Academy. Welcome to our live stream of game analysis with the Grandmaster, which we do every week on Thursdays at 8:15 p.m. Good to see um, all of you in here. I don't know how clear my voice is. I think I changed the setting a little bit, so my microphone might be a little bit far away. If you can hear me clearly, that's that's good. If not, I'll try to speak a little louder. But um, but I guess we are all set. Um, I'm going to just it's echoing is what I'm hearing from my issues. Anyone else having a problem of um, echo? Ooh, that's a little bit of an issue. Okay, I'm gonna try to see if I can fix this a little bit in terms of how can I fix the microphone settings. Oh, some of them are saying echoing, some of them are not. Okay, so I don't know, maybe it's one of those settings from your side, maybe you can plug in a microphone or something, I don't know. Um, uh, figure it out. So I do have a game from Sai that I I promised at some point, but Sai, we had a couple of weeks going on. So what I'm going to do today is first I'm going to ask um, a question and then do one of the games from someone who gets the answer first, and then of course um, I'm also going to keep your game and and do that. Okay. Um, but before that, I'm going to give it a couple of more minutes for people to join in, and let me pull up. Size game. Okay. I'm going to try to pull up your game really quickly when we need it. So can you actually send me that game again, just in case? I'm not I'm not seeing it right now. Um, just send it to me right now. And I know Vedanta, you send me a game too. Uh, I can try to do that at some point, but the way this works is I want to give everyone a fair chance. So. I will be asking a question and the first person to get the answer is the one who's going to get their game analyzed, right? So we need to do it that way. Um, while we give it a couple of more minutes, let's talk about what chess is going on this week. Um, and we have a lot of activities coming up uh, this week. So let me talk about it a little bit before we get started. Uh, next week, we have like probably six different activities starting. So the first thing is we have a camp um, called Mastermind Chess Camp, which is for players rated 1500 and above. So if your rating is 1500 and above, or we consider about 100 points um, below that. So if you're 1400 plus in your peak rating, you can still be considered for this camp. Uh, it's called Mastermind. We have four Grandmasters. I will be teaching. Um, Grandmaster Arun Prasad will be teaching. You, you are probably very familiar with both of us. We have Grandmaster Julio Sadora who is the head coach of University of Texas at Dallas, the school that I went to. Um, so I'm, uh, and he's a great guy. I've taught him with other camps, uh, in other camps, and he's really full of energy, Sensei Julio. Um, the last one is Grandmaster Elchon Moradiabadi. A lot of you from North Carolina already know him. You've already done a camp with him last year, probably. And uh, so you would, you would definitely know him as well. Uh, Radhima says he's my coach. Yes, I, I think you're talking about Coach Arun. Yes, that's right. Um, okay, so that's Mastermind Chess Camp. The next thing is we also have an advanced camp for players between 1000 and 1500. So if you are a night level player in our classes, or if your rating is over 1000 and it's less than 1500, you have an advanced chess camp. And that's, you have morning sessions and afternoon sessions, you can, you can do that. We also have regular chess camp, which is anyone between, I guess, zero to 1000. So you could do the regular online chess camp. We do a lot of fun stuff in camps. We do cahoots, we do tournaments, we do variants, and we, of course, learn. But we, we learn topics in a fun way, so you guys can uh, mix it up a little bit, right? And on top of it, there are two new things, very exciting things that are starting, which I really like, um, you know, I'm looking forward to. One of them is called Chess for Teens. So we are starting a program called Chess for Teens. It's actually not just chess. We are going to work on logical thinking. We are going to work on logic puzzles on a chessboard. We are also going to do um, team building and stuff like that, which is very useful for um, you know players where you use chess skill set also outside. So 
Um, if you have siblings, if you have anyone who might be interested in chess for teens, that's actually just two hours a day, Monday to Friday from 2 to 4 p.m. And I think it's really going to be fun and cool. You will get to learn chess with people in your age group um, if you're like 12 or older. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly a teenager. It's just a name of the program. You can reach out to us. So yeah, all of these exciting ones. Yes, Dinesh, you would qualify for it. You're a 13 year old. <laughs> That's right, yes. Um, okay, we got enough people, I think in here, the usual um, group is here. Um, I also have one more exciting thing to announce. Um, I'm going to do a Kahoot show, which uh, Chess Base India, um, Grand, I mean, International Master Sagar Shah was recommending me to do one and I thought of it and I think it's, it's going to be a fun thing to do. So I am going to do one um, next, I mean, coming Saturday. I'm going to send out, um, right after this show is done, the next one will be Friday evening. Uh, we do have a uh, Challenger Chess Coach show, which we always do. You guys are welcome to come in and participate and play against our coaches. Um, and I'm also, we also have a nice chess match on Saturday at 5.30 against Chess Hobbits. Our Charlotte uh, friends, um, National Master Karthik Rangarajan would be, is, uh, the coach would be bringing his students to that match. We took a heavy beating last time. <laughs> it was it was painful. I was on live show and we were, I was crying. So <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen next time. Uh, we will definitely put up a good show. I mean, it's a friendly match. I would just want kids to play and enjoy, but at the same time, hopefully, you know, not do so bad. <laughs> so um, so we, we would definitely uh, do that. And on top of it, a Kahoot show where all of you get to come on stream and play, do the Kahoot. And I'm going to choose a topic. I'm going to give one and uh, you can all be part of that Kahoot. I'm, I'm looking forward to that too. And that credit goes to uh, International Master Sagar Shah, who actually suggested that. And I'll put that. All right, let's go for the question for the day. And whoever answers it will get a chance to do a game analysis with me. Um, there was only one stalemate in the whole of World Championship matches ever. Who are the two players who stalemate at who? The first player to answer this will get a chance. In all the World Championship, World Championship matches and games, there was only one stalemate that ever happened in a game, in a World Championship match. Who were the players who did it? Let's see who can answer this and who can answer this right first. I'm looking at the chat, let's hope some of you are well read on this and are able to answer this. I haven't seen any answer yet. Okay, we got a right answer. Looks like Manish has the answer. I'm getting Magnus, Fa Fabi, Anand and Carlson. No, nope, none of those actually happened um, as a stalemate. There was only one game and that was actually between Korchnoi and Karpo. It's actually a very, very interesting end game. Um, I will have, okay, Manish is the one who got the answer, right? So Manish, you can send me your game and we can we can look at your game. Uh, I know last week, Mahati had a great game. So hopefully we can have one more fun game with Manish. And of course I have Sai's game and Vedanta's game that they emailed it to me. If we have some time after this, we're going to look at that, okay? Uh, in the meantime, let's, uh, let me see if I can pull up the game between Karchnai and Karpo. So I can actually show you guys that cool end game. I actually should have done this before, but I didn't. I know they have a ton of draws between them. So while, while we're waiting for the game, I'm going to pull up um, this particular game between Karchnoi and Karpo. Okay, so it looks like I did something wrong in my search that doesn't really think that I found the game. Uh, and Manish, once you send me the game, send me a confirmation that you did. Let's try one more time. Karch, no. Carpo. I have a feeling I had, oh, I have the material window on. No wonder. Let's see. Um, I don't have a email from Manish yet while he's sending his game. Let's still pick this up. I'm still not finding this. What is going on? Karch no. Uh, 
Okay, let's see if I follow this. Okay, I found the game. I found the game, so I should be able to show this in a second. In the meantime, Manish is sending me his game. There is a lot of a lag. It says, usually we have about six to eight seconds of a lag, uh, Mahati. That's very common. So keep that in mind. The game, Sai says he sent his game too. That's good. Okay, in the meantime, let's go back to our position and Okay, that didn't work. Oops, that didn't work. That's a little painful, that didn't work. All right guys, I'm for some reason not able to pull this up, which is kind of strange. Chess player should be able to give me an easy result with a search. I'm gonna try this one last time. I'm gonna clear everything else. I don't have anything on search. Let's go to material. Let's reset that. Let's go to position medals, annotations, card pro, card shine. I spelled them right. So I hope I didn't mess that up. Still not getting it. Okay, I'm gonna give up on that right now and I'm maybe just going to show you the end position. Yes. It's too bad I can't really pull up the exact game. That's okay. Uh, Manisha sent this game to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly set up the position maybe here. So you guys can see what kind of happened in the game. Yep, this was the end game. If you guys don't know exactly um, what happened, uh, between Karchna and Karpo, there was a big, big, um rivalry so at that point um this and they didn't like each other that much so this was a critical point uh, and Garchner was actually white here and he had an extra piece but I, if you probably noticed that the pawn is queening on a light square um but the bishop is a dark squared bishop so this is a theoretical draw so but Garchner went on to play a lot of moves by trying to keep these pawns on the board and then eventually try to push the you know defending king uh, the black king away from the queening square, but after a lot of time, he couldn't do it. So he ended up stalemating Carpo, thinking that it'll be actually a fun way to do it. And he wanted to embarrass Carpo, which was uh, the story behind it. Okay, so I see that uh, Manisha's game is here. So let's get started with our game for the day. Okay, let's reset the board here. All right, we have this game um, played in ICC, I guess. This is also, uh, Manish, is this also from the tournament, um, the World Open side event, which I guess, yes, I mean, last week we got Mahati's game from that. So maybe this is the same one. So let's go on, D4, D5. Manish is playing white against Super Blue Sky who is playing uh, black. So let's look at this. So we have another London system, knight f6, c3, knight c6. I'm just going to go through the opening phase. It's pretty straightforward. We are just developing pieces. e6, bishop to b5, and bishop to d6. Again, a very common idea. What black does here is to get rid of this bishop, so e5 is, is a possible um, plan very early on. Okay, so castle, bishop takes, pawn takes. This is an interesting structure um, because what this does is this really strengthens the square on e5 and um, and th these two pawns of course are really the ones that are strengthening that square on e5. The only thing is e5 is still not an outpost. You have to remember that the black pawn on f7 anytime can come in and kick that uh, and guard that square. So basically you have to ca be careful about um, overindulging on e5. But the good news is the minute this pawn moves up, um, 
the e pawn becomes a super weakness. So overall, the structure is pretty interesting to me. But the only thing is now I feel like black should be very comfortable given that this bishop is outside the pawn chain. If this bishop is maybe on c8, I would think that black is probably slightly worse um, in that position. But now I think black should be pretty comfortable. So castle, bishop takes, pawn takes. Why not take a free pawn? You know, that's, that's me. If I can win something for free, I'm always going to consider that. So that looks like a free pawn to me. Let's try capturing it. What do you guys think? Do you think that's too dangerous? I don't see any real danger because any kind of attack on that pawn, I think will be met with b4. For example, knight to d7 will be met with b4. By the way, there's also another strong move, knight to d4. Because after knight to d4, I'm also hitting this one. I, I, if you take on c5, I can take on c6, or I can take on f5 and ruin your pawn structure. So, um, Manish, I would say that you have to be careful about these things. If your opponent is sacrificing a pawn on c5 for a long time, you, sh you can take it. It's not always a bad thing. It seems like a free pawn, like most of them are saying. Because there is also, um, like let's say queen e7 or something to attack this pawn, you're going to go b4. And you completely cemented that pawn and it's I'm mean, sorry not this one and coach John's pointing out that black also doesn't have dark squared bishop that's true all these squares are going to become super weak with your extra pawn so be be keep an eye on these things right um I know a lot of you play the queen's gambit as white or play against it and you usually think that this d c4 and c5 are just normal pawn sacrifices yes they are normal but there are times where you just take those pawns when your opponent is just giving it to you for free. Like here, All right, knight e5. So now your opponent decides to save it. But okay, he's hitting b2. Queen takes b2. No knight d7 tricks because the knight on f6 is guarding it. Okay, so let's move on. Queen b3. Interesting. So you're forcing him to an end game. I'm thinking uh, maybe rook to b8 is uh, a logical move. Meyer is pointing out in the queen's gambit you're not giving it for free. There are some places where you actually give that pawn um, Meyer, but because white gets a strong center. So you win that pawn back in some variations. There are some variations white just gives it up. Um, particularly in Catalan, in, in, there are some variations in queen, queen's gambit where, where the c4 pawn is just given for free. But anyways, coming back to this one, I still think um, the open B file is a small advantage for, for, for black. So that's that's a one benefit that black has in this position. I mean, slightly worse pawn structure, but you don't have to worry too much because this pawn is going to get traded. And the bishop is outside the pawn chain, which I pointed out, also controls this one. So the B2 pawn can be a problem, right? So. Okay, queen b3 looks okay. I'm thinking if it's possible for me to draw you to play c4 and play some like knight b3. The the thing I was thinking about is this, but the problem is I need to figure out a way to do something about the b2 pawn. If, if you just take the pawn, I don't think I have enough compensation. Even though my knights are awesome, and I could maybe win this one, but I, I think black is fine here because this one doesn't seem to be weak as well so mm. yeah so I, I guess we're discussing about all the gambits and giving up pawns that's true all right we're going we'll go on with queen b3 pawn takes pawn huh so your opponent is now forcing you to take on b6 this is something i should have seen early on that i didn't calculate so queen takes b6 makes it very interesting because c6 would become hanging but d4 is kind of open so what do you guys think we should calculate this a little bit to make sure we have this variation yeah so we we can eliminate c takes d4 because queen takes d4 and you're hitting the knight and this pawn so winning the pawn on c6 is not enough black will simply be up a pawn so that means queen takes b6 is almost force yeah vedanta is saying take the pawn and play knight f3 but vedanta if you do that f4 is hanging so you're dropping another one now right so you cannot do that i think you realize that 
So you might have to take on b6, which is almost forced. By the way, that's what happened in the game. Looks like Manish, you gave up that pawn. But let's look at queen takes b6. This looks like the more um, important move for me. Queen takes and pawn captures. So now I could take on d4 or I can take on c6. What do you guys think? Which one should I take? Which pawn do you think you would take if you're playing white here? Would you take on c6 or would you take on d4? Take on d4. Anyone else? I see Vedanta is saying d4, c6. Okay, a lot of c6. Harish and Ayush are saying knight takes c6. Interesting. Mahir, you gave a very good variation. I'm going to talk about this. So in, in general, this queen takes b6 is a problem for um, white. You don't want to. So when both the queens face off on b6 and b3, in fact, both players try to avoid doing this capture when the pawn captures and opens up the file, right? So forcing this capture is always a little tricky. Now, if you take back on d4, your pawns are slightly better. I do agree with that. But the problem now is I think black center is just too good. I basically have a much better um, pawn, pawn coordinate, coordination here. Probably something like rook to c8 followed by c5. And like I've pointed out multiple times now, the bishop would be a pretty useful piece when the queen side opens up completely, right? Um, so overall, I'm, I'm beginning to like black's center compared to white's outside pass pawns here because I think active pieces at some point, maybe if I trade this knight, this is the only knight I think I would be worried about. So once I achieve this, in fact, I have a really cool plan for black. What I would do if I was black is I would first of all move my knight to d6. Um, I have to always watch out for knight to d7 ideas once I move that. At some point, I will play f6, kick that knight out. Maybe king to f7, so I keep an eye on this e6 pawn. And once that knight goes out, this bishop gets multiple squares like d3 and other things, right? And of course, all of them eventually will lead to c5 and more play in the center. So this is the problem I don't like with pawn takes b6, right? Uh, sorry, with pawn takes d4. But with knight takes c6, which some of you already pointed out and you liked it, I guess pawn takes c3 or d3 are two options. Let's let's ask a question on this one too. Which one do you like for black? Would you play d3 or would you play pawn takes c3? What is your best move here? Getting d takes c3. d3 is bad because of knight e7 check. I'm going to actually agree with it, but you still have to think about it a little bit. For example, knight e7 check after king h8, knight takes f5 and pawn takes f5. And I, it's obvious that black pawns are like super ruined. But don't stop your calculation right here, you know, because this pawn on d3 could be super dangerous. The question basically is, can white take this pawn or can black create this, create any counterplay? So when I saw this, that's the first thing I asked myself, like, is, is black fast enough? Can I get my rook maybe to e2? Can I just throw in an id4? If I can get some of these moves, then this might be great for black. But um, it is white's move here. And I think after rook d1, I think white's quite comfortable. Black does have chances. Yeah, black probably plays rook e8. And... I'm going to get rook e2 like I talked about. How would you guys deal with that? Actually, look at this. It's still not so easy. We just talked about how this could be tricky and it actually turns out to be tricky. Because if you take on d3, I'll take on b2. So someone's suggesting knight f3. Okay, knight f3, I'll go rook in. What are you going to do now? It's beginning to feel pretty okay for me because if you have to play rook to d2, and if you don't want to take um, on d3, so because, which makes sense. If you take on d3, I'll take on b2. Ridhima, if you have a question, please type in. I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Type in the chat on what your question is. So the problem with this, I feel, is now I have kind of ruined your pawn structure. And the position is about even. I mean, you can play knight e5. I'll simply play king g8 or something like that. So... 
so that's that's a little bit of a problem here guys so i think black does create some counterplay let's say i play knight f3 rook e2 and then rook to d2 so now the problem is i don't see a clear way for um you to even pick up the pawn Ridima wants to know when is Kahoot. It's going to be on Saturday, Ridima. Most likely afternoon. I'm going to um, just finalize the time and put out a stream um, schedule probably tonight. Um, I'll just confirm the time. The Kahoot will be on, on Saturday. Uh, so, Rook 2, D2. Rook captures, Knight captures. What I was talking here is that you see this pawn. Now it becomes, it begins to look like it's quite, quite a problem. Right? Because how can you attack that pawn? You don't have a very clear way to attack the pawn. The rook is keeping an eye on this one. So maybe something like knight e4 looks really nice to me. Um, it's not even easy for you to break through. Or probably even better is this. I don't know. This rook going to e8 and then just coming back in again. Uh, no, the Kahoot is going to be in our stream in this channel. Chessbase India was the one who was suggesting it to do it. So he was. Uh, we did it first time I did it first time with chess base India in a in a YouTube channel we might do it in our channel now anyways going back to this one uh, this is a great example of how short term and long term play both come into a position do not discard a move because you think it looks bad in terms of structure right so this is a great example most of you said d3 no is bad because 97 knight takes f5 looks like d3 is not that bad um, it, it might still be equal I'm trying to see if white could play a knight f3 and knight e5 maybe directly. This way rook e8 is met with knight e5. Maybe that's a kind of a critical move that changes the evaluation a little bit. Yeah. So just a minor switch. Look at that. You start here and rook e8. Now you get to play. Actually, you don't have to play knight to d4. Some of you are saying knight to d4. I even have a strong knight e5 attacking f7 and attacking d3. Right? So, I mean... You, I cannot keep up with this. I'm going to lose a pawn. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose d3. If I lose d3, then it's game over. White's completely better, right? The whole point is this. So, it requires some calculation. So, let's go back. Pawn takes c3 maybe is possible. And pawn takes c3 back. And this is the position we have to evaluate. I would put this roughly about equal. I think both sides are pretty comfortable. Uh, blue. The problem, the only problem for white, right? I mean, I would say roughly equal, but maybe black um, is what I would prefer. Because this is the only constellation for white. I'll tell you why. Because this is kind of stopping me from playing this. You have 97 ideas and your knight's in a great place. No questions about it. But if you're looking at it from white's perspective, what am I supposed to do? I have two weaknesses, right? Both of them are in an open file, which can be attacked in the future and piled upon. Whereas my opponent's weakness is in an open file that I cannot reach easily. And that's usually the problem, right? When you look at weaknesses, you have to look at how easy is it for you to approach it, attack it, and, you know, make something out of it. So here, it looks like the bishop on f5 is doing the big, big damage. But having said that, I think this should still be equal. Eventually, I think white should be able to trade off and get into an equal position. All right, let's go on to the game. So it looks like Manish made a small mistake here. He played pawn takes d4, dropping a pawn. So after queen takes d4 and knight f3, he just drops the pawn on f4. And knight takes c6 and queen to d6. So he drew this game eventually. So I'm kind of curious to see that. So at this point, I would say black is totally dominating. Black has two central pawns and also a bishop. A bishop in an open position which of course we can try to trade off but that might take a couple of moves right so you lose some moves or you lose tempos doing that uh, but overall it just looks like it's clearly better for black so let's see what happened rook c1 knight to d7 and knight f d4 okay so i can see how black uh, or white can fight for uh, some kind of compensation thanks to the knight on c6 however i don't think it should be enough Maybe, maybe at this point after rook here, moving this bishop was kind of necessary. I'm thinking maybe bishop e4 might not have been a bad idea because if he goes knight d4, you get to play e5 now. So maybe because knight d4 is always a tempo. The reason I want to move this bishop is because knight d4 is always a tempo, right? 
So I feel like moving the knight will allow e5 as a, as a main move. Manish says he went for tactics from here on. That's kind of interesting, Manish. I want to see what kind of tactics we did here. Knight d7, knight fp4, bishop to g6, and knight to b5. Okay, so now I'm beginning to see that white clearly has the initiative and I think most of you probably see that. The two knights, the rook in the open file, an active queen. So initiative is always a short term thing, right? Uh, black is up material, an extra pawn, that's a long term thing. But white's active pieces, short term thing. So at this point, the knights are creating some damage. Let's see what happens. <laughs> queen f4 and knight to c7. Whew. That's a cool move. I like it. I think um, white was actually winning by force right here after bishop g6 because this is a really nice move and no matter where the queen moves he goes knight to c7 nice tactic Anish. queen cannot take the knight as we all can see knight e7 check simply picks up the queen to discover attack so that's not going to work and if the rook moves the only square that is safe is rook to c8 but then knight e7 check still picks up the rook so nice so what could black have done here so i'm going to go back here what do you guys think so after rook c1 knight um d7 knight d4 so let's start from here first because this is the first move before knight b5 that's how we should analyze this right coach Luis is saying you would not have seen this tactic i'm sure you would have seen you this tactic coach Luis. you're being modest about this but i do think it's it's kind of cool that Manish found this during the game and he executed it that's pretty nice so what do you think black should do here guys let's try to figure out some so this is a tough situation for black right uh, so the first thing is this seems to be a double threat allowing knight takes f5 has to be bad yeah i'm pretty sure all of you will agree with that because i mean you just ruin your pawn structure yeah the pawns are in a great place and playing knight takes f5 if i just ruins it like for example let's say i play knight or to b6 so this does stop um knight c7 idea because if you play this i can go back to b7 however i just noticed still some knight takes a7 is possible uh the reason why this stops the discovered attack threat is if knight c7 check i can take knight e7 check the queen will take so that's not possible but maybe knight e5 or knight takes a7, like I said, are all possible. So knight takes a7, rook takes, and if you take on b6, I'll take on a2. If you take on a7, I'll take on a7. Pretty, pretty interesting here. Possible. But the simplest reason why I was rejecting knight b6 is because white can take this. And pawn takes. So this seems a little unnecessary from white's perspective. Because, sorry from black's perspective because black now has worse pawn structure so that's why i would go back here and i would say the critical point is rook c1 here um when i was suggesting bishop e4 or bishop g6 i think this was probably an important moment here in the game to deal with this particular threat or i don't know if rook c8 was possible is there any knight e7 check guys no i don't see anything so i could play rook c8 and hit the knight and if you play knight to d4 I can move my bishop. Maybe this is not so bad. I think putting the knight on d7 was like a double, double problem because black not only um, allowed this knight c7 trouble, took away the key square on d7 from the queen. See, if you play knight to b5 now, I can play queen to d7. That's that's kind of important. right? I need that square for my queen. And I'm saving some... Um, I mean, I'm controlling a lot of key squares from the black knights when I'm sitting on d7. So knight d7 clearly created a problem. Yeah, knight b5, queen d7, and I can still survive this. I mean, I see that white has, again, initiated, but I feel like I should be able to deal with this. And at some point, all I need is one move. At some point, I start pushing, then I'm completely fine. But um, that's probably where black has really went wrong. I think he has to make a preparatory move. Bishop e4. Or I, I was saying bishop e4, you know why? Because I want to play e5, right? It does seem scary though, because look at this knight here, e5 and knight b5. This is probably again a problem for black because now e5 is hanging. So my great queen d7 move is not possible. 
So I just wish I can create some counter threats. Yeah? Do you guys think I can do something? Any checkmate, cool checkmate stuff that I can try? I think it should not be possible because one, the queen is coming in and two, the pawns coming in. So it should really not be a problem for white to just do knight c7. And uh, yeah, like I said, queen g4 will easily be met with f3. And um, I the only problem I'll have is to decide between taking the rook or taking the bishop. So white should be fine here. So yeah, I guess rook c8 or bishop to e4 is what had to be played really here. So knight to d7 was played in the game. Let's move on with the game and look at the cool tactic that Manish did. Knight to c7 after queen captures. Bye, Ayush. Enjoy your dinner. Uh, queen cannot capture, so knight b6 was played. Knight captures a8, rook captures a8, and knight captures a7. Whew. Manish, you are all over your opponent's pieces and pawns with your back crank checkmate. Or eliminate the defender. Nice. So knight takes a7, simple idea is rook takes a7, will be met with queen takes b6. Right? So more, more tactical problems for black, knight c4. But Manish, now I'm kind of disappointed you didn't win this game. <laughs> you played a great position so far. Knight comes back to c6. Do we go to c6 or b5? So he is threatening a fork here, but I'm not too worried because queen b7 is a tempo. I'm guessing that's what you were thinking. Why not queen b7 directly, uh, Manish? Did you think about that? Ah, you're down to 25 seconds. So that explains some of those things. I'm thinking I could go in directly. Except rook to b8 is possible. A little annoying. I mean, this seems super scary for uh, black because so many, you know, back rank checkmate threats and stuff. But I'm kind of surviving, yeah? Because what does white play? It seems to me like queen to d7 is still okay. Because if you take with a rook, you get checkmated. If you take with a knight, you still get checkmated with rook c8. So this seems okay. Someone suggesting rook takes c4. Why can't I take with the pawn? Um, D takes c4 and rook to d1. Okay, but Luis, this is only a threat, yeah? I'm not doing much here. I can simply play h6. I won't take your, I won't take your um, queen. Because once I play, let's say h5, you have to move the queen, I think, yeah. And it doesn't look like, <clears throat> when you you sacrifice an exchange, and I don't think it's enough yet, yeah. Rook takes e4 looks very flashy, but I don't know if that really works. So I would say just queen to d7 after rook b8. Because now I'm going to play b3. And rook c8 is pretty much mate. I also have knight c7 and hitting the rook. So this seems to me like a very strong idea. Let's try something here. I mean, just for fun. Let's say I play h5 or h6. Yeah, let's try h6. I think b3 should do a good job for me. After knight c6. Actually, I think maybe knight c6 is even better. I'm liking knight c6 even better now because I think I, ha I see a, a spot a nice checkmate idea. Which may or may not work. After rook takes b2, what do you guys think? Do you see any possible checkmate ideas? Hmm, I don't I don't think it works. I I was look I was counting on this and thinking queen g8 could be a very deadly move, but I just come right back. And black has just picked up a bunch of pawns, so it doesn't really work. Hey Ansh, Ansh joined us today in the thing. Very nice. Nice to see you, Ansh. Alright, so I'm not gonna spend too much time here. I think Anish um was in serious time trouble as well, so he just brought his knight back. Seems okay because he has queen b7. The only dangerous situation right now is some check and, and combining it with some light square deadly attack on your king. I would be careful about it. Rook f e1. What do you think black should play here? Knight e4 was played in the game. I'm not sure if knight e4 is a good move. I'm not a big fan of knight e4. I think white should be completely winning after knight e4. Um, First, let's start with that. 94 was played in the game. Who can tell me a move for white? You are up material. You're up an exchange. You have two outside pass pawns. So white is completely winning as long as the initiative is neutralized for black. 
if you can utilize black's initiative let's see who can tell me a move for white come on someone should be able to tell me how white should take care of this 97 check not bad but you're going for the attack actually 97 check followed by rook c8 is very interesting but f2 is hanging it's very dangerous 97 and 96 is what most of you are suggesting but that doesn't neutralize per se right um what's the move that takes care of your opponent's threats all you have to do is just defend why don't we think a little bit about defending instead of attacking f3 is being suggested by a lot of you again i like f3 but it probably is a very sound move i'm not disagreeing with that either i would just think about something like queen b6 or queen a7 and come back to queen e3 when you're up material you don't want to play risky positions you don't want to do anything um, unnecessary rook c2 is very dangerous siddharth because the bishop would be eyeing on c2 so that's a little dangerous vedanta eventually said queen b6 i like that only because of the nature of the move again this is the kind of position where a computer might tell you a different move and it doesn't really matter i want you to play as a human which is the most simplest and natural move that is you are up material and winning make sure your opponent's threats are kind of stopped so queen b6 to me does that and the next move queen goes to e3 in fact i think you might be you guys might be right in playing 97 check capture the bishop again the trade is good for you and now play queen b6 this is probably even stronger because now the queen comes back to e3 Coach Luis is saying exactly that. That's right. You play knight e7 check, knight takes g6 check, and then play queen b6 and play queen d3. And I think white is completely winning. So, um, Manish, another thing is if you're low on time, you have to look for simpler options, right? Options where you don't have to think too much. Options where you don't have to calculate and, you know, make sure that your opponent is just getting a very important move or something like that, right? So you have to be very careful about it. So f3, knight to d6 was played. Queen to d7. So again, you're going for a very aggressive approach. I don't mind that. But maybe given the time situation and everything, simplifying approach of bringing the queen back might be simple. But okay, queen d7 looks pretty strong. I can't complain. Maybe king f8 was required. Okay, king h8. Whew. That looks dangerously close to just losing the game instantly, right? Something should just give... <laughs> but let's see. 95 f6. Okay, you simplified here, which makes sense. How did this not end up being a win? How did we let this slip? Queen takes e6 as well. Fantastic. You are crushing your opponent with one tactic after another with a back rank checkmate point. Uh, queen takes e6 is really cool again because if rook captures, rook c8 leads to a checkmate. And queen takes e1 or something like that does just doesn't work because I'll just trade. Rook takes, rook takes, and we just did nothing but trade. Um, I'm not sure if any check would come in handy. You have to be careful about these checks in positions like this, but luckily this, this is the only check uh, black has, and you just move in, and nothing changes. Rook takes, queen still loses too, rook c8. So queen e6 looks awesome, rook f8, b3. Somewhere I'm getting, a, I, I'm getting this feeling that you probably did not have enough sense of danger and let your opponent cam, come back into the game. Because this is just game over. Ooh, okay, so he goes to there. D4. Ah, so okay, this first of all is a big simple logic. Why are you letting him push and push? That doesn't make any sense, yeah? Why would you play D4 and D3? Because this pawn is weak on D4, it's weak, it's weak on D4, it's uh, weak on D5, weak on D4. But very strong on D3, right? If at all, you have to be thinking, how can I just get this pawn right away? So, you know, this king being here, I'm thinking of another really cool checkmate pattern, which is not very likely, but let's see if anyone um, can think of this. I'm thinking of queen takes g6, and when pawn takes g6, you can try to checkmate along the file, but it's very, very unlikely because h4 is guarded by the queen, and h5 would be guarded by the pawn itself. So you have to checkmate on h3, which is just not happening, yeah? Maybe with idea f4. 
oh, maybe you could have done this. After rook d1, d4, I think this move looks pretty nice. With the idea of maybe f5. But okay, black probably plays rook e8. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time here. You're completely crushing this one. So let's just move on. d3, queen e3, queen a5, rook to d2. So the only problem now is you have given your opponent something. Your opponent has something to play for, which we didn't even have to have in the first place. Queen a5, h3, rook takes d3. Okay, so I think I pointed out the correct plan. This pawn is the only problem, so you just have to play f4 and f5. So I know you were thinking it's probably going to expose your king, but it's very, it's not at all a problem. You just go king h2 or something and you'll be super safe. I think black doesn't have enough firepower to attack your king. So simply play f4 and at some point you want to play f5. Um, you have to watch it for this. But maybe now rook d3 is possible, yeah? Can I play rook d3? This looks pretty cool. If it's doable. Looks like it is because if bishop d3, queen d8, queen e8 is made. If rook takes e3, then rook takes c3. And after rook taking back, I'll play checkmate. And queen takes d3 will be just met with rook takes d3. And I have to give up my queen. And I'm still up. Yeah, looks like rook d3 works. So f4 is probably a good option. Just play queen f3 next move and play rook f2 or something and then play f5. Or of course, there are multiple ways to achieve this. I would probably prefer queen f3 or something first. And then eventually play this. But okay, you simplified it. You're up three pawns. I'm not going to complain. You're completely winning. Ooh, okay. Of all the pawns that you can give, Manish, not the B pawn. It kind of gives away your connected pass pawns, right? So after queen takes a5, okay, you're still winning. Possibly a rook and pawn in game. Did we get a rook and pawn in game? Game drawn by mutual agreement. So I'm guessing you were low on time. That's probably one of the reasons. Oh, you also just blundered the pawn. Who can think of a move? Here, let's hear a move. So five seconds remaining for Manish, that, that makes sense. What would you play here? I think a6 is hanging. Let's hear a move from uh, someone in the audience. Chat, let's see. Queen to g6. Awesome, I like queen to g6. There's queen to e6 or queen to g6. I think I like either one. The whole idea is you cannot take on a6 because of this really nice trap. Yeah, rook check. And black is forced to take on b8 and then queen takes, queen wins. And rook takes pawn anyways, loses to rook b8. So queen g6 or queen e6 would have been really nice. Because the thing is, after queen g6, even if I figure out a way to defend the last rank, which I actually have no possible way of doing, I could save the pawn with rook b6 now. So anything, any queen move out of that uh, sixth rank, not blocking the rook, would have been a much, much simpler way to, to win this one. But okay, uh, good game, good game, Manish. I think you had some really nice tactical shots. So next time, um, if you're low on time, try to simplify. Uh, I mean, you did simplify the position. So again, I can't really complain too much about that. I think you did a good job. All right, so we have about 10 minutes. So I guess like I promised, I could see size game. So I'm gonna look at size game. He has been waiting for like three weeks on this, I think. So let's do it. It's just that last week, he was not able to be here. I hope it's not a long game, Sai. So hopefully we are, we are able to look at it quickly. <laughs> By the way, next week, if you guys want to get your games analyzed, one of the important things to do is to study up some of the, you know, history. Look at World Championship matches, look at World Championship games, uh, read, read on Wikipedia. I, I will most likely ask you questions about, you know, World Champions and top players. Um, that's my favorite. So, Manish is saying he played the chess base India Kahoot at 1 a.m. Yes, Manish, I heard from your dad. I'm impressed. I'm also worried that you're up that late, but <laughs> it was a long, slow Kahoot because me and Sagar and we were, we were talking about all of those and we were doing it slowly, so. 
it took us a while um but it was still fun but we'll we'll probably do a faster version of that um because i think we just go over the answers and stuff and then do it do it much faster coach luis says he, he knows all the answers to the question he probably does he does read a lot so he does know that all right let's look at this game sai is playing white against raminator i like the name raminator on live chess sai what is the time control for this game playing in 1800 oh was this part of the league sai was this part of the league ah mid atlantic league that's right so g60 i like looking at g60 games all right we have a caro con okay typical pawn structure g6 okay um i think okay bishop b3 has happened which makes sense i i guess this is a very subtle move but you guys have to remember this just in the last position in Manish's game we saw bishop f5 and e6 and how changing this move order makes a huge difference right if you play this move first black gets a chance to play this and then play e6 i even though i don't know if that's the most logical thing to do here because bishop b5 knight e5 ideas are dangerous but uh, just letting you know on on these subtleties louis says this is his favorite way i play the pano botanic attack i like that i play like to play the iqp isolated queen pawn positions all right so we're just completing development knight a3 is kind of interesting yeah so you're going knight c2 and maybe going knight e3 at some point um okay so bishop e3 maybe not required i think i would just castle and play rook e1 you see how this open file um is a good thing sai so maybe that's the better option to just simply castle i know you want to develop your bishop but there's no rush, you know. Depending on the time, you could go bishop g5. In fact, you really want to put it on f4. But the queen's guarding it, so you have to figure it out. That's the only thing. All right, bishop e3. Ah, we got twice the same structure, guys. We got the f5 and d5 structure. That's very interesting. The only difference is now, there is no pawn on e3. So, I mean, do we take or not take? That's a tricky one i might have actually castled you know why i simply think that black is way behind in development here so i would think about pawn structure and long-term play usually but in cases like this i would simply say look at me i have all pieces developed and you have not so let's say bishop takes d3 queen takes d3 and bishop g7 i might consider doing something fast right like c4 i don't know if c4 actually is possible probably not because c4 will just castle so maybe there is not much of an initiative that i can use but there was this minor initiative that might have prompted me to castle without taking just in case my opponent did not develop or castle the next move that initiative could have been big so okay you took on f5 ruining the pawn structure and you played queen c1 hmm i guess you want to go to the diagonal but you want to avoid 94 that makes the only like logical sense of why queen c1 so you're worried about 94 and you go queen c1 i probably would have still castled maher this open file is not that big a deal uh, there are some places where i would really be worried about an open file maher is pointing out saying that the g file being open is very dangerous but i'll tell you what white does not have enough resources to attack that open file black could castle king's and just go king h8 that's very much possible and the same thing would apply for white i think white can just castle I know rook g8 will create some threats, but you know, that's not the end of the world kind of threats. So you could definitely deal with that. Okay, so that I think is a very, very interesting move. You are trying, trying to trade off the good bishop. He played bishop d6 allowing bishop g7. What are we missing here? You played bishop d6 and you played bishop g7. So I feel like we won material here and I don't see what the big problem is. You came up with a nice idea. Ansh is asking, why do people leave the H file open? Same reason, Ansh. Um, attacking the king has multiple factors. It's not usually just open king. That's one of the problems that we, we face is that you guys always think open king is attack, attack, attack. No, space could be a reason. 
Um, peace activity could be a reason, right? Lots of other things. I feel like this exchange sacrifice should not be enough. I mean, the position seems reasonably closed. Um, the squares are guarded well enough. I think maybe a knight on a3 is a little misplaced. I would prefer it to be somewhere on d3, uh, but you can reroute it. But overall, uh, it looks like white should be okay. Yeah, I think winning this material is good. By the way, bishop h6 is kind of interesting because if he doesn't, I mean, if he doesn't move, you're trading the dark square bishop. That's okay. Um, but black could have simply focused on the e4 square. That still looks pretty strong for black, you know. That's a that's a very strong square, and you cannot easily get out of that. All right, let's go on with this brilliant exchange sacrifice, and let's see what happens. So you took the rook, and white's up an exchange. You play knight to d2, rook to g8, queen to f3. So I really want to play g3 here, side. So I would have played queen to e2 first, because I want to avoid bishop takes g3 ideas, right? So let's say he plays rook g8. I actually can play g3 now. Because bishop takes, pawn takes, and queen takes check will simply be met with queen f2. And I feel like white should be completely winning here because black doesn't have enough compensation for the piece. Some queen f4, I'll simply play knight d2. Um, we just trade off. Okay, black has some compensation, but clearly not enough for the piece, right? So you have to anticipate this move. When you play knight d2, look at what you're doing. You're super exposing this. You cannot do this anymore because this is now maybe crushing for black. See, after queen takes, look at what happened. One tiny little move. Instead of knight d2, if you had played queen e2, you could have played g3. Keep that bishop out, right? You don't want a bishop sitting on f4 in your territory. And this would have, this would be lost for you. So obviously you cannot play g3 after knight d2, right? And also queen f3 allows knight e4. So now, if you take pawn takes, this pawn's hanging. So you, I think he's already creating problems. Look at his pieces. So the critical point I would say is here, you play this move, maybe he can play knight e4 directly. And you know, I would even consider playing just king f4 to defend this pawn. You're up material, right? Neutralize the advantage. That's the key. Like for example, let's say knight c2, rook g8, just play king f1. Okay. What's the big deal? How are you going to attack me? Oh, I found a very interesting move for black. Let's see if anyone sees this. Just when I thought, how are you going to attack me? I think I found a very strong attacking move for black. <laughs> that was kind of sad for white. King f1 defending idea didn't work. Does anyone see it? Let's see. Let's wait for chat to see if anyone's still awake. And give us a move. What can black do? Coach Anu is giving us bishop g3. Nice. <laughs> You don't have to always castle in chess, says Mahir. That is true. But bishop g3 is too strong here. I think I'm just going to lose this pawn. So king f1 would have been a nice idea without that. Maybe rook g1 I can play. It looks a little passive, yeah? Yeah, bishop g3. Knight g3 is not going to work, guys. Knight g3 is some, I'll simply take. You don't have enough. You don't have enough for the for that piece. You cannot say that you have sacrificed a piece for a pawn to open up my king because you really don't have any follow-up, right? You need to have clear follow-up. So that's probably the issue here. I think black has some things. So queen, D, queen e2, knight e4. I think this is uh, sort of critical. I, I'm not so sure exactly how we should respond here. I do want to play g3. Ah, I could play g3 now. So I was worried about this. Let's see who can find this move. I was worried about bishop takes, pawn takes, and knight takes. But I see a strong move for white. Who can find it? After this move, I think it's over. What should white play here? I see a Arab has just joined me. Okay. Who can give me a move, guys? Guys, come on, let's go. Queen um, is under attack. Manish says queen h2, Mahir says queen h2, very good. Now I'm getting queen h2, very good. Queen h2, cool move, yeah? That pin saves your rook. Queen g2 is not good enough, Sai. If you play queen g2, I think the position becomes double-edged because after knight takes, queen takes, black has a lot of compensation for a piece, yeah? The position is still, I mean, I still think white is better, no question. 
but black has a bunch of pawns the king is open you know I, there's plenty to do but queen h2 is just too strong the pin stops you from taking the rook and completely winning for white all right let's see what happened in the game knight d2 was a mistake queen f3 knight e4 so now he's really creating problems for you knight e3 so i like how you rerouted the knight let's see if that helps Ooh, that's strong man i didn't see that coming that's pretty good after pawn takes queen a5 check and it looks hmm looks pretty bad knight takes d4 is pretty good move so i would say tough luck you you lost to a pretty strong game this seems to be a very very strong move again a classic example of initiative when you have pieces in play this is what happens you are able to play moves like this after pawn takes d4 queen check if king d1, queen d2 is mate. If king f1, knight d2 wins a queen, forcing this as the only move. And any b4, queen takes b4 doesn't really do anything. Check. And queen takes b2. Now, triple threat. Should probably seal again. Rook d1 was played. You play knight d2, huh? That's kind of curious to me. I would have probably taken the knight on a3. Your opponent decides to play knight to d2, which seems to be a little weird. You said you use all the time. Um, it seems like a3 is a free, ah, it's not a free piece. Look at me. It's 9, 15 in the night and I'm missing simple tactics. Yeah, queen a3 is just a blunder. You guys see it? Knight f5 check or knight d5 check and you just pick up the queen. So I have to play knight d2 check, rook takes and queen takes. So, okay, black is down one piece. So, this is actually not so bad. Knight c2. Maybe knight c2 was... Can you play... Oh, queen c1 check is coming out. He's creating lots of problems for you. Actually, just re remembering that queen cannot take on a3. So, maybe Sai, um, just g3. Because remember, the queen on f3 is actually guarding the knight. Through a, through a discovered attack. So you just go g3. Would have been much simpler. You know, because you could just play king um, here next. If, if any moves like f4, maybe even knight g4 is possible. And basically what I was talking about is if you play check, I'll move up. You cannot take the knight because of the same old knight d5 check. So I might have considered just going g3. Or maybe even g4. I don't know. Yeah. But g3 allowing the king to get out. Okay, so knight c2, I think now it's you're losing peace. The knights are hooked to each other, but you, you cannot hold on to it forever. You're still somehow hanging in there. Rook g6 and queen a3 check, huh? Well, the, the problem is black at least has a draw. So I can have just check back and forth. That's a draw at least. Um... Oh, I could play king e2, king e1, and then queen d1. It's, it's kind of tough. Uh, but rook g6 seems simple enough because if the knight comes back, check picks up the rook here. So I guess you try to give a check. And g3. So you're trying to save your rook over your knight, which also makes sense. However, pawn takes seems like a strong move. Yeah, now you're <laughs> probably exposing your king even more. Ooh, so yeah, your opponent has played a very strong game side. So he's not even taking a knight. <laughs> pro you're probably winning. He's probably winning with taking the knight, but he's not even taking the knight. He plays rook f6, threatening mate, and that's the end of the game pretty much. Because now rook f1 and queen f2 are both checkmate threats. So Sai, this is actually a pretty strong game from your opponent. I would say it's a good game to study and learn from it, right? So it's a tough loss, but sometimes when your opponent plays so good. You know, what can you do? Um, there is, there's nothing much we can do. So he has played a good initiative game. Uh, the only thing you have to remember is you the critical move of queen e2 would have been very important. Um, Vedanta, the time is up for today. We do like one hour. So we've gone a little past an hour right now. So we cannot do another game. So the only way we do game analysis here, Vedanta, is you have to come prepared. So if you want your game analyzed next week, Go read up on World Champions, talk, like look at Wikipedia about World Championship matches, games, 
Um, I'm, I'm probably asking one of those questions from the World Championship matches and or classic um, classics. So just be ready for that, right? Just like challenge your coach to game, can we do challenge coach to puzzle battle? Huh, that's interesting. That's an interesting idea. Maybe we can do um, a blitz matchup or something to do puzzle to challenge the coaches. I, I like that. Actually, you know what? Coach, I've never done a puzzle battle. We'll try it tomorrow. We can try to do a puzzle battle. Hopefully, I can uh, take some of you down. <laughs> but I'm not the sharpest right now. It'll be interesting. All right, guys. I think with that, we'll wrap up this uh, stream. This was a fun. We did like two games. So it was that was good. Tomorrow at six o'clock, we have challenge your chess coach, and the day after, we're gonna have two events. One of them is the Kahoot on Saturday afternoon, and then the and the evening five thirty, we have our match against Charlotte um, players chess hobbits, and that's going to be fun and interesting match. So you guys, if you guys are around, tune in. That that's at five thirty in the evening. All right. I will see you all tomorrow at 6. Have a good night. Bye.